Uh, this past Labor Day weekend of September 2016, my wife and I set out on Lake Minnetonka with another couple to explore the sights and sounds of Lake Minnetonka on this really kind of a, be a beautiful late summer evening. We took a long cruise and went all the way out to Priest Bay, which is kind of near the uh, western edge of, the, uh, of Lake Minnetonka, where we visited some friends and shared some snacks and beverages. We came back to Excelsior Bay, where our boat slip is, and it was near sunset when I had the bright idea that, hey, I think there's time yet to get over to um, Crystal Bay, where we might be able to see the fireworks show at Lafayette Country Club. So we cruised over there. We got there in time to uh, find a decent spot to put our anchor down and to open up some uh, beverages and uh, also to, to pull out some snacks so, and just wait then for the pyrotechnics to begin. We were really impressed by that pyrotechnic uh, wizardry that was on display there. It was really a good show and we, my wife and I both commented how this was uh, nearly as good as the one that we would see in Excelsior Bay from our uh, slip. I'm sure that the members of Lafayette Country Club would think that, uh, that they probably outdid the, uh, the Excelsior show, but nonetheless, they were both very, very good. Then we decided, now here it was, dark of course, after the, after the uh, fireworks show, decided to head on back to our slip. And I've done this many times, and um, a number of times in the dark as well. It's very simple. You just leave Crystal Bay, go through the, under the Arcola Bridge, look for the three sets, the sets of three uh, green and red uh, buoys out there in the middle of uh, Browns Bay, I guess it is, and then uh, hook a right around Big Island, but making sure that you stay clear of the buoy that's out there, the point buoy, so that you don't crash into a pile of rocks or something along there. Well, it was just as I rounded that corner around uh, Big Island that the rain began. So being the good captain, I, uh, I asked our, um, our guests to go below so that I could uh, just, I would be the only one this then who would uh, be subject to the rain. And so I continued thinking that I knew pretty much where I was, but the rain combined with the darkness really kind of shut me out from the lights that I ordinarily see ahead in Excelsior Bay that would guide me back, as well as the lights on the south shore of, uh, of the lake that I would use as kind of navigation points to get me where I was going. It was as though there was a bushel basket of rain that was covering up, covering up my destination and where I was going. But I pressed on slowly with making no wake, and the rain stopped eventually. Actually, it didn't last too long. And so as it did, then the lights along the shore, on the south shore, and the lights in Excelsior Bay began to show up. It was none too soon. The lights were always there, of course, but they were hidden by the rain, hidden by the storm. Thank God I felt when, I, when it finally I began to see the lights that I actually did know where I was. So that was a really good sign for us. Jesus in today's gospel talks about our being salt of the earth and light to the world. These are great compliments to us, but they're also real challenges for us to bring something of ourselves to the world to help people. They are enormous challenges, and, and they're very complimentary to us because Jesus himself is the true light. So in a sense, he's comparing us to them, saying that we, to himself, saying that we are the light of the world. And salt, of course, is connected with purity. And I guess that's because of glistening whiteness to its color. Salt and light also share another characteristic. They are both discernible by our senses. We can taste salt and we can see light. Neither, though, is meant to be really the direct or the main object of our perception. 
For instance, nobody makes salt for dinner. We make chicken for dinner and we put salt on it in order to improve the flavor. It's the flavor of the chicken that we're after, not the flavor of the salt. Also, we turn on a light not to look at the light, but generally we're going to turn on the light so it will shed light on something, for instance, a book that we might be reading, or certainly we turn on a light in order to guide us on our way. As you know, many, um, you know, there are in the navigation world or the boating world, you've got these large um, lighthouses to guide people. And of course, at the estuary, the entrance to any river, there are a string of lights to help guide captains who are sailing much larger vessels and have much more responsibility than I had on my little boat on uh, Lake Minnetonka. But yet, uh, they are trying to navigate through unfamiliar waters, and, um, and they need the help of those lights. Jesus calls us, calls us as Christians to be light of the world. What this means is that we are to enable others to see something other than ourselves. And that something is the Lord. This is what Jesus tells us very, very clearly in the gospel. The Christian life is, to shine, is a life that is to shine in a way that people would see the Lord, our God. We couldn't glorify God if he were in darkness any more than we'd be able to find our way in the dark without the lights to guide us. But how is it that we would live uh, to make our light shine? We have some information about that in the first reading from Isaiah. The little bit of a background on that is that Isaiah wrote this particular um, part of his message during a time where the Jews were returning to Jerusalem uh, from the Babylonian exile. And as they were returning, many of them noticed that the, uh, the immorality that existed before the exile was again kind of rearing its head. The Jewish people thought, well, the way we would address this is we'll just rebuild Jerusalem and we will rebuild the temple and then we will be a light to the rest of the world. But Isaiah came and said, no, that's not what the case is. If you want to be a light to the rest of the world, you'll need to be a community of justice. You'll need to, with open arms, relieve the oppressed, share your bread with the hungry, and shelter the homeless. Few of, few of us would feel as though we are qualified or able to address these issues, I guess, in our world, or to speak in the grandiose terms of being salt for salt of the earth and light for the world. But, you know, there are others who have felt challenged like this too. In our first or second reading, which was Paul's letter to the Corinthians, Paul expressed his own reservations about being able to carry this torch himself. He was sickly, depressed, and acutely aware that he was unimpressive at, as a person and unable to preach with any great impact. These are the words that Paul used in describing his own mission and how he was able to address these matters. He said, I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamations were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. I think despite all of Paul's objections and what his feelings were that he was not really ready for this mission that he had been chosen for, I think we would all agree that Paul did pretty well. And I think we can use him as an example and hopefully guide our own ministries in the church. As we each launch our days, we have many things to do. We have this to-do list which kind of appears in our mind's eye and just waiting for us to do something, to get started with it. And the gospel, here it is, it comes and gives us yet another to-do list. And that is God's to-do list to be salt for the earth and light for the world. 
To be salt, for the earth, salt of the earth is to bring spiritual savor to people other, other than ourselves. And to shine with God's brilliance is not to shine or bring attention to ourselves, but it is to point to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we're not expected to drop everything that we have in order to, uh, to do God's list, to drop our list and do all of what is on God's list right away. It all sounds pretty daunting, doesn't it? But there is a way just to get started. You can share a kind word with the supermarket clerk, give a, thank, a word of thanks to the maintenance staff, a thoughtful call to a sickly neighbor, when we do this, we shine with God's goodness and love and become salt for the earth and light for the world. And I know it's only a beginning, but I find in my own experience, and I think many of you would share this, that our God has a way of inviting us to do more once we have mastered some of these basics. On that note, I'd just like to conclude with a short prayer. Lord, you have called us to a prophetic vocation in Christ. Help us to proclaim your mighty deeds in our words as well as in our actions. Amen.